Do you know Jesus was offended when Peter said what he said? He said, Peter, you're an offense to me. You're savers. You're, you've got a mindset of, of, of the natural. You've got a mindset of the fallen nature. You ain't got the mindset to get what I've got for you. You're thinking thoughts from Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. You understand how serious that was? What Peter said to him? Do you understand how serious this is? What Naaman said to his people? He got on his chariot and cut a trail. The dust was flying. I can't believe this. This prophet told me to go bathe in this river and dip seven times. How dare him? He wouldn't even come out and talk to me. I have seen people because the preacher didn't act right when they come to get something from God. They got offended and missed God. Come on. Didn't get what they wanted. Hallelujah. I never will forget that. I've told it before. This woman came to Shambaugh. And said, Shambach, I want you to carry this candy while you're preaching. Shambach said, woman, you crazy. I don't carry candy while I'm preaching. No, you got to carry it because I'm going to go feed it to my sisters in the insane asylum. And she's going to come back to her right mind when she eats this candy. He said, you crazy, woman. Won't you carry a cloth? He said, well, they won't let us bring cloths in there because they know what they are. So he carried a pack of M&Ms on him while he's preaching. That woman didn't. That woman didn't make sense. She should have been in there with her sister. If Peter would have seen her, if Naaman would have seen her, Naaman would have said, "Put her away too." Huh? Because when you're gonna trust God, it don't make sense a lot of times. And you may see this happening over you. You've been praying for this person or praying about that, and it gets worse. Well, you don't go to, you, you, your saying is going to get you the answer from God. If you get a mindset of the devil and unbelief and doubt and you begin to rebuke God for the way things are working, you ain't going to get nothing from God. This kind of preaching either gets you free or make you mad and then you'll get free. Either way it works, hope you do. But Naaman, he takes off. And, and the man had a quality. You'll have to understand he had a quality because he had some soldiers with him and some servants with him. He was a man that you could reason with. There's some people you can't reason with them. He said, listen, if, he, he, they said, listen, just calm down, master. Just calm down. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying this morning. Just calm down. You may be in a situation where you don't understand why you're there. You may be going through something you don't understand why you're going through it. You've been praying. You may you 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 don't understand what's going on. It's like a tornado. It's like a whirlwind. But let me tell you something. Don't ask God why, when, where, how. Don't ask him these dumb questions. I'm going to show you out of Scripture how to get an answer from God. How many know the Pharisees tried to catch Jesus all the time and they was always asking him questions? And how many know that their tradition made the word of God of none effect? Our words, our mindset can make the word of God of none effect. We can pray for hours and not get answers ever if we don't line up with God. Come on now. So Naaman, they said, listen, you got to listen to this man. If he'd have come out and done something great, you would have done it. But all he asked you to do is go down to Jordan and bathe seven times. Why don't you go do it, master? He humbled himself. He went down to Jordan and he bathed. Dipped seven times in Jordan. Guess what happened? His skin was new skin. Why? Why? He didn't lean to his own understanding. He corrected the attitude, the mindset that he had, Charles. <laughs> it 
Let me tell you another one. There was a man that Jesus had been up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John and comes down off the mount. He'd been up there. Jesus had been up there talking to Moses and Elijah about his passion. It took Peter a long time to get it. I mean, you realize this. <laughs> Jesus didn't build his church on Peter. He built it on the revelation that Peter got that he's the Christ. Thank God. Me and Peter are going to get along good in heaven because I'm a lot like him. So here's a man, and they come down off the mountain, and here they are trying to cast the devil out of a little boy. And there's a big commotion, and all these scribes is upset, and they, you know, they're talking, and, and, and Jesus asked, what's going on? And this man said, well, my son, you know, since his child said he's got this demon that comes on him, casts him in the fire and everything, and, and, and tries to uh, uh, kill him and said, your disciples couldn't cast him out. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't understand that. You know, knowing what I know now, I mean, that guy didn't know what I know, but knowing what I know now, if Jesus had come down off the mount and he said, what's going on? I said, it's okay, master, you take charge right now. We got a problem here. But he said, your disciples couldn't cast him out. I, I don't understand why they couldn't cast him out. They could, he still got the demon in him. And, 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 and Jesus asked him some questions, you know, and, and, and he said, do you believe? And he said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. You know what? You know what causes unbelief? What causes doubt? It's when we begin to question God. This man had more of a mindset about these disciples not being able to cast this demon out than he did that Jesus was standing there. My God, if he'd come on the scene and them disciples had been over there fighting, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. And the thing was getting us. <laughs> I'd have said, it's okay, here's Jesus. I don't care about this. If somebody can't pray a prayer of faith for me, I don't care. I'll find Jesus. I'll find Jesus. Some of you say, well, why? I took him over to that. I don't believe in healing because I took my sick child over to that church and they prayed for him and he didn't get healed. That don't mean Jesus is not the same yesterday, today, and forever. That does not mean that Jesus can't heal that child. Go back and find Jesus yourself. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still a healer. They want to cop out. Oh, uh, they pray for my they pray for my brother and he, he, he didn't get healed. I don't believe in that healing world. You don't believe in Jesus because Jesus is a healer. Are you with me? He hasn't changed. If you take somebody somewhere to get somebody to pray for them and they don't get and the prayer don't the prayer doesn't go through right then and it doesn't get answered right then. Go find Jesus for yourself and talk to him. Come on now. It is it is what mindset that you have. Are you gonna go around whining? Why, how, wah, wah. I've done that and it don't work. And if I get somebody to pray for me and nothing happens, that's all right. I'll get them to pray for me again. I'll go pray myself. I'll get 10 others to pray for me. I'll get everybody on Facebook praying for me that I can get praying for me. I'll get everybody <laughs> on the internet praying for me. I'll get my brothers and sisters praying for me. But I'll never say, why have I not received it yet? If I never receive it, if I go to heaven, I'm going to go rejoicing. And when I hit the pearly gates, I'm going to shout hallelujah. Look out, Peter. Here comes a blood-bought, blood-washed child of God. And he ain't got no more problem. 